In this tutorial I'm going to show you how to make these graphical circuit diagrams you often see around with a free program called Fritzing. Once you know the basics of how Fritzing works, they are quick and easy to make. The first thing you need to do is head over to fritzing.org and download the latest version. Choose your operating system. I'm on Windows. Once that's done downloading, you'll have a Fritzing zip file. Fritzing doesn't have an install procedure, so just find a, a good place to unzip this. Normally I would put it in my program files, but for this demonstration I'm going to put it in my desktop folder. Once that's done, you'll have your installed Fritzing folder on the desktop. Just go into there. If you want to create a desktop icon for this, you can go to the fritzing.exe, left click and drag while holding down the Alt button and that will create a desktop shortcut for you. So go ahead and start Fritzing. This is the Fritzing welcome screen. One thing to note is that when you first run Fritzing, it will create a Fritzing folder in your documents, which will contain all your user added parts. To begin, click on the breadboard tab at the top. Uh, this is your main layout. Uh, you've got your main canvas screen here. This is where all your parts will go and your wiring. In the top right are uh, all your parts and they're stored in their own categories, which they call bins. So if I click on one of these, I've got all the Arduino boards uh, down here, SparkFun boards, and under core is where a lot of your common components will be. In the bottom right is the properties window. At the moment, I've clicked on the breadboard, but if I click off it, uh, you'll notice it disappears. So click on the breadboard and I've got options of location, rotation, and options that are specific to the part. In this case I'm going to change one of these options, the size, down to the half size. And I also want to rotate this 90 degrees to make it easier to see. Um, to drag your parts or to pan, hold down the spacebar and left click and hold. Uh, zooming is done with the mouse wheel or down here at the bottom. And then I want to add an Arduino board. So over here on the top right, click on Arduino and Uno. Just rotate that 90 degrees. You can select multiple parts by dragging, as you can in most programs, um, or clicking on one and then control to click on the other one. To start with, I want to add um, some power wires. You'll notice if I hover with the mouse over any of these pins, they highlight, and the same again on the breadboard. These are valid locations for wires and components to be placed. So to place a wire, left click and hold, and then drag over to where you want, and then let go of the left mouse button. Um, to shape the wire, just click anywhere along its length with a left click, and it will create an elbow. And again, I'm just going to move this board down a bit. Now you'll notice these wires aren't horizontal. To make them horizontal, click at the elbow with the left click and hold down shift and it will lock into place. And again down here. To change the color of the wire, highlight the wire and go over to the properties tab. I'm going to change this from blue to black. Now I'm going to add a positive wire to the power rail on the breadboard. So again, left click on 5 volts, drag over to the positive rail, left click on the wire to create an elbow. Now if I hold down shift too early, 
it will want to snap to the vertical. So first create the elbows you want and then use shift to control them. I want to change this to red so again over to the properties change it from black to red and that's my power setup. The first component I'm going to add is a tactile push button which is a really common component over in the core menu on the right uh, and it's actually down here again left click and drag um, place it anywhere for now because I want to rotate it by 90 degrees in the properties window now it's important to note with the push buttons that you orient them the right way and place them across the dividing line in the breadboard. Now I'm going to add a positive wire for the switch and connect the signal wire to let's say pin 12. I'm also going to change that one to purple and create a bend and another one and probably a third one and the other thing a push button typically needs is a pull down resistor so over in the core parts I've got resistors in the top left I'm going to drag one of those over and this is going to be a pull down to ground. Now something you'll notice is the components don't always line up perfectly. Uh, when you place the component though you'll see there's two purple connections either side of it which says that I do have a good connection. Uh, but if you want it to be clearer visually you can left click on the end of the resistor and just drag it over to create more of a tail. Now to change the value of the resistor, left click on it and head over to the properties window. I'm going to make this one 10k, which is a typical pull down resistor. And you may have noticed the color bands of the resistor will change to reflect the value you choose. Now sometimes you'll have to keep playing with the wires until you make it visually clear. Uh, you'll see me doing this a lot throughout this video. Uh, next I'll add an LED which is also a common part which can be found in the core folder or bin uh, and it's down here. Left click and drag onto the board. Uh, again with this one I'm going to rotate it by 90 degrees and I'll place it here. Maybe here. Now I'm going to power this through pin 13 of the Arduino. So click on pin 13 and drag it over to the positive side, which is the rounder side of the LED as opposed to the flat negative side. Create my elbows. And I'm going to change this to orange. To complete the circuit, I'll connect it through a resistor to ground and create a little tail on the resistor over to the pin. Uh, the resistor value I'll change to 150 ohms. Now I'm going to add a second LED and to make the process quicker I'm just going to left click on the components I want to copy, uh, the wire, the resistor and the LED, control C and then control V for paste and I can either move this with the keyboard as I'm doing now or I can drag it across. I'll place this further down, uh, maybe on pin 5.
going to change this color to green. I also want to change the color of the LED in this case, so left click on it, over to the properties window, and this color drop down gives us a lot of options. I'm just going to choose the middle green. The next part I want to add is a module, a typical prototyping module um, like these. Um, in this case, I want to add this one up here, which is a, a three color LED or an RGB LED. So the first thing to do when you have a component you need to add is to search the fritzing library using the search icon up here. I'm just going to type in RGB LED and enter. And you can see it's found a few uh, but none of them are quite what I'm after. There is some LEDs that are the RGB LED itself, but I want it in particular on the prototype module. So to add a part that's not in Fritzing already, you need to find someone who's made a custom part for it. And that brings me to one of the best parts of Fritzing. You can make your own components. I won't cover that here, but just know that you can make them if you have the time and inclination to learn how. To see if a part exists, uh, you could go to Google and just type in the part you're after, in this case the RGB LED module fritzing, and I'll add the word part, and the first two hits look promising, so this is the, the name of the module, the KY016, and even some of these further ones could also be promising. Um, I'm going to click on the first one because this Arduino modules as a website contains a lot of these parts. Uh, yep, this is indeed the part I want. And oh, here you go, you see a fritzing diagram like we're currently trying to make. And further down is the fritzing part itself. So I'm just going to download that. And that's downloading. They're only small files. So here we've downloaded a zip file. Unzip this. So downloads, and then I've got my folder. This is the Fritzing part file, the FZPZ type. So back over to Fritzing. And this little icon in the top right hand side, the little hamburger menu icon, just click that and you'll see an option at the top called import and click that. Uh, and then we want to select the part we just downloaded. Uh, so the FCPZ file type and open it. So here it's loaded the new part and it's loaded under the mine category or mine bin. Uh, if I click on it you'll see some of the details. Uh, it is the part I want so left click and drag over and I'm going to rotate this one by 90 degrees also and place it at the top here. So this module takes four pins, uh, one common ground and one positive for red, green and blue. So I'll join the ground first change that wire color to black and then I'm going to connect red to pin 11 find a neat way to fit it in change that wire to orange. And now the green, I'll connect to pin 10. And change that pin to green. And blue, I'll connect to pin 9.
I'll change that wire to blue. So there's my blue, green and red LEDs and the common ground. Now the last part I'm going to add is a servo motor. So over to the search icon and search for a servo. And this is it here. Now, although we've been connecting everything to the breadboard so far, you don't actually need the breadboard at all. So for the servo, I'll leave it just floating free. It takes three wires, a ground, which I'll connect to my board ground. positive and a control wire that I'll connect to pin 6 again hold down shift if you need them to snap to the vertical in this case Something I'll mention now, if you're having trouble with the wires and components uh, being placed in the right position, just go up to view and make sure you don't have align to grid selected. If you click this align to grid, your components will snap to very discrete positions and especially when you've got them rotated 90 degrees, it's very hard actually impossible to line up with the breadboard so I like to unclick align to grid and this completes the circuit but as a final check um, I like to go over and check the ground and 5 volt lines are in the right place if you click on one of these, so if I click on the ground line, you'll see that all the points that it's connected to are highlighted in yellow. Um, so in this case, following it around to the left, we've got the ground line on the breadboard we're connected to. And then further down, the ground on the common ground on the module. And then we've got the servo ground. So that's correct. A resistor. In this case, it's a pull down resistor, so it does need to be connected to ground. And for the LED, we're going through ground, uh, through the resistor, through the negative side of the LED, out the positive side, and it's been controlled from pin 13. And again, the same thing for the next resistor down. And on the positive line, it's only a couple of things connected to positive. Uh, we're connected to the breadboard rail, the positive input for the switch, which goes through the switch and we receive on pin 12. Positive on the servo, and that's it. If you would like to export your circuit as an image, just make sure you don't have anything highlighted as that will come through. So I'm going to click off that. You could take a screenshot, but then you'll get the grid lines. So instead, head up to File on the top left, Export as an image. I'm going to choose the PNG file type. And name the file. And hit Save. And this is the image here. So it takes away the grid lines, saves it in a, a higher definition. If I have a look at the actual size, uh, this is what it looks like on a 1080p screen. And that concludes the fritzing tutorial. I'll add some examples at the end sped up so you can see the process on some other circuits.